Allow me to introduce myself. Jean Passepartout at your service. Yes. Well, what do you want? Sir, I am here to apply for the position of manservant. French? Why? Hmm. Well, we shall see. <clears throat> You've worked as a gentleman's gentleman before? Here are my credentials, monsieur. Single, I trust. I am. Previous employer? Napoleon III. I served him faithfully, monsieur, in the imperial household before the fall of the Second Empire. Hmm. Did you indeed? How I do admire your English monarchy here, monsieur. Long live England. Uh, yes, uh, well, uh... I am not Napoleon III, but one does have certain basic requirements in one's household that, um... Oh, I know, I know. I want nothing more than to serve a quiet gentleman of strict but temperate habit in peaceful surrounding. I adore the tranquil life. Allow me to ask, um, what time do you make it? It is, monsieur... Precisely ten o'clock. You are in my employ, Passepartout, as of this moment. Oh, merci, monsieur. Thank you. Here is a list of your duties. And by the way, your watch is one minute fast. Detective fix, if you don't mind, sir. <laughs> Come with me. Detective fix, sir. Have you been briefed? I have, sir. And I flatter myself that I'm well acquainted with the devious workings of the criminal mind. If I am to be entrusted with this appointment, uh, I'd certainly be prepared to go to the ends of the earth in order to apprehend this rogue. Brindisi. Yeah. Sir? I'm sending detectives to every major port in Europe and the British Isles. You will be here. Italy. Italy? You keep a constant watch on all passengers who arrive and depart. I, I, I welcome the challenge, sir. I have a working knowledge of the lingo, smattering. Two thousand pounds to the man who brings him in. Two thousand pounds? Oh, well. That'll be all fixed. You can count on me, sir. Same way out, is it? Mm. Two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Disgrace to Queen and Empire. I'll oh, get overexcited. We can get the money back. What do you mean, get it back? Where from? The fellow who steals from the Bank of England isn't likely to get himself caught. You don't have to lecture me. I may forget a director of the Bank of England. I'll tell you this. The robber's a gentleman. You call somebody who steals 55,000 pounds a gentleman? Gentlemen, please. Can we get on with it? Your trick, Mr. Ralph, if I may say so. Oh, sorry. Well, he must be a pretty shrewd man, this thief. Personally, I'm all in favour of his chances. Oh, I don't know. I don't think there's a country on earth that would be safe for him. Oh, 
I think the world's big enough. It was. Huh? Uh, did you say something, Bob? It was once. Can we play, gentlemen? Once. It was once. <laughs> Do you think the world's getting smaller? <laughs> He's right, you know. A person today could go completely around the world in a matter of six months. Eighty days. I beg your pardon? In eighty days. Oh, God, now, Fogg, you must be joking. We all know there are great improvements in the railways and the steamships, but uh, well, what about... Um, what about shipwrecks and um, storms and railway disasters and so on and so forth? Included. Sir, <laughs> or theoretically, I suppose it's possible, but on a practical basis, not a chance. Eighty days. Wrong, sir. Impossible. Eighty. Very well. I would be willing, for my own part, to wager ten thousand pounds that such a journey cannot possibly be made in that time then you would lose sir the devil i would if you think it's possible i defy you to do it sir are you suggesting mr stewart that i should journey around the world in 80 days i am sir be advised then sir that i should like nothing better gentlemen this is really absurd now shall we go on with the game Oh, my dear Stuart, can't you see? This has all just been a bit of amusement. Doesn't really mean it. But I do. Good. At the moment, I have a deposit of, um, 30,000 pounds at Baring's Bank. And I'm quite willing to risk the entire amount. 30,000? Good heavens. My dear fellow, you could lose the whole lot just by some unforeseen delay. Mr. Flanagan, the unforeseen does not exist. But think of it, sir. You would be jumping from train to steamer to God knows what until you collapse. No, let's put an end to this right now. It's a very poor joke. A true Englishman, sir, never jests about anything so serious as a wager. If there's anyone else here who lacks my confidence, then please speak up. Eighty days. 1920 hours, or 115,200 minutes. By heavens. Or less. I will match Stuart's wager, Fogg. 10,000 pounds. And I. Very well, then. Now, then, do you think we can carry on? When do you intend to leave? The train to Dover leaves Charing Cross every evening at 9 o'clock. <laughs> You're Go this evening? Of course. And I shall return to this very room at nine o'clock in 80 days, or less. My check drawn from Baring's bank will remain here while I'm gone. Look here, Fogg. We don't wish to take advantage, but we're quite willing to suspend this game right now while you go away and uh, make your preparations for the journey. Suspend the game? What on earth for? <laughs> May I remind you, gentlemen, Diamonds are trumps. Be so good as to play. to leave the house. Leave, monsieur. At once. Forgive me, monsieur, but did you say leave? Within 20 minutes. Are you taking a trip, monsieur? We are taking the train to Dover. Dover? And around the world. The world? Around the world, monsieur. In 80 days, or less. Uh, 
Uh, monsieur, are, are we taking any trunk? No trunks, only this carpet bag. Two shirts, two trousers, three pairs of stockings for me. The same for you. We shall purchase whatever we need en route. I trust you have stout shoes. We may do a little walking. And as we leave in 19 minutes, I suggest you pack at once. I'm ready, monsieur. Mm -hmm. My Bradshaws. Take 20,000 pounds with us. No. We may as well take the whole lot. Take very good care of this. I will guard it with my life, monsieur. <laughs> Oh, my God.